Okay, welcome back. So now I want to show you an example of applying these ideas of the expected value standard deviation of a discrete random variable. Okay, so think about this uh, probability distribution that we came up with before, right? The, our random variable was the number of boys in a family, in a three-child family. We, came, we assessed that sample space. We came up with these probabilities. Okay, so now we want to find our expected value, our expected number of boys here. Okay, so let's look at this over in Excel. Excel is pretty, pretty nice to do this stuff in. So we have 0 through 3. I also have those probabilities. Um, I think there were fractions in that last picture here. I have them as decimals. So to find our expected value, we just take each value of x and multiply by its probability. And 0 times anything is just going to be 0. 1 times that, 0.375. 0.375 times 2, there we go, and I'm just going to drag this last one down. Okay, so we've got that. This is enough to find our expected value. Next, I just take the sum, and there we go. So our expected value for our number of boys, one and a half. Now notice your expected value doesn't have to be an actual value of x, interestingly enough. Okay, and that makes sense. If I said, hey, I'm going to have three kids, how many boys you, would you expect? One and a half is right there in the middle, since it's a 50-50 type deal. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is doing the standard deviation. And remember, there were two different formulas that we looked at, theoretical and computational. So I'm going to do it with the theoretical formula first and then we'll move into the computational formula and just kind of compare. So I'm back over in Excel. So the first step to finding my variance is standard deviation. i got to find these deviations. All right, so I'm going to take 0 minus the mean 1.5. Now, I could have just typed in 1.5, but I clicked the cell here in Excel, so I'm going to lock that cell in. So I can just do that and drag or I could have even just typed in 1.5. Alright, so I'm going to take each of those deviations and I'm going to square them. Okay, so I've got those. Now take each of those squared deviations, weight them by their probabilities, drag it down. Now I've got each squared deviation weighted by its probabilities, sum these guys up, and that gives me my variance. So I got a variance of 0.75 to get from my variance from my variance to my standard deviation. I'm just going to use this square root function or raise it to the one half power. All right. So we just did that using our theoretical formula here. Okay? And and what we just saw it really wasn't that bad. Right, just using that theoretical formula. If, if you want to use that, especially for simpler discrete random variables, kind of like this, it's totally fine. Okay, but for more complicated applications, we can use this computational formula to kind of speed things up. So I'm going to flip over here, and I've already got my ex expected value part of this filled out, but I'm going to use the computational formula and show you how it can be a little bit quicker. Alright, so basically what you do is you take each value of x and square it. So of course 0 squared is just 0, 1 squared, 1, and so forth. Alright, but then I take each of those squared values, weight them by their probabilities. Okay, so again 0, 1 times that. Then I add those up. Okay, so I found 3. Now remember, at this point, Right, we uh, some people I see kind of just leave their answer at this point. This is not your variance or your standard deviation. This is the expected value of x squared. Recall your formula is for the variance, the computational formula, expected value of x squared minus expected value of x squared. Okay, so take that three, subtract this guy squared. Okay. Then I get 0.75. This standard deviation is just the square root of my variance. Okay, 
So if you'll notice, just comparing to what we did before, we saved ourselves a little bit of work, okay, about a column's worth of work, slightly easier. So what you'll what you'll see is, I mean, with simple examples like this, it's not going to make a ton of difference. It's not the end of the world to do it this way. But with more complicated examples or situations, hey, your computational formula can really come in handy. And it's especially going to come in handy for continuous random variables. Okay, so I hope that helps pull everything together. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.